Lynn Lee, is sleeping peacefully at Texas Children's Hospital in Houston. She's tired for good reason. She's been born twice. Her first birth of a sort came last spring, when doctors were forced to remove Lynn Lee's legs and lower body from her mother's womb at only 23 weeks in order to remove a life-threatening tumor. For Lynn Lee's mother, Margaret Bomer, who'd only just lost Lynn Lee's twin, there was no other choice. She had a 50-50 chance of making it, and the tumor was so big. Um, I was coming for regular checkups, and by the time, at 23 weeks, um, the tumor was shutting her heart down and causing her to go into cardiac failure. But the operation was a success, and doctors then placed Lindley back in the womb so she could finish her development naturally. <laughs> Ahead lies some physical therapy, but overall, Lindley is doing well, according to her grateful family. How exciting it is that she's made it through, and not only made it through, but done so well, and, and we're very thankful for the doctors. Hospital officials say this type of tumor occurs in one of only 40,000 pregnancies. But there is an upside. Lynn Lee can now celebrate two birthdays every year. This particular case was one of those where we were monitoring the child uh, over the course of the pregnancy and it was clear that the fetus was starting to get into trouble, the heart was failing, and there was a need to go in and, and perform surgery. This particular surgery being done in utero is done very rarely all over the world. I think there are only about three or four centers all over the world that perform this kind of operation. The actual surgery on the baby, uh, Lindley, on the fetus itself, took less than half an hour because you have to work extremely fast and quickly to really um, get things done and, and get the baby back in the womb. Obviously, I trained in Nigeria. My background was in Nigeria. I know there are lots of talented physicians and, and surgeons in that country. Uh, we've been able to, I've been able to benefit from the uh, structure and an organization and the infrastructure here in the United States. And I think the Nigerian health sector has a lot of human potential, but unfortunately there isn't the um, infrastructure and support. Equipment are uh, not at the best that they are not the best they can be. If you compare what we have in Nigeria with what exists in other um, countries of our caliber. Uh, I think we, we know that we have uh, we still have ways to go, but then again, I think with diligence and and support and enthusiasm and and really everybody, both government and private sector, coming together uh, to to make things work, we can all accomplish. For pregnant women needing specialized care, there is no place like Texas Children's Fetal Center. Whether the problem lies with the mother or baby, the experts here can help. Everybody hopes for a joyful, straightforward, boring pregnancy. Uh, but many times there could be some unwanted excitement if it's found that the baby has a problem. Now with advances in technology, we can actually do something before birth. Be it either to give you know, some medications to the mother that gets passed over to the baby, or actually to perform surgery on the baby. The surgery can either be a full-blown operation where we open the uterus to operate on the baby, it could be operations where we use specific little instruments and needles and tubes to actually perform the procedures on the baby. The fetal center can be thought of as one-stop shopping. Experts in all fields ranging from imaging to cardiology to neurosurgery meet here to accommodate the patient. You can imagine for anybody who's been told there's a problem, your mind starts racing until you get answers. So the worst thing you can really do is just prolong that whole process without giving answers. So what we try to do, one, is to get the woman in as quickly as possible to get that appointment so they can get the test done. And at the end of that day, to have some information. At least by the time they're leaving, they have some closure. Coordinators work with patients to guide them through the process. Starting from the initial evaluation and things that need to be done to get her history and information about this pregnancy and prior pregnancies, going through the imaging center that for whatever images may be needed, be it echocardiography, ultrasound, magnetic resonance imaging, whatever form of imaging is needed, it's all resident here at the pavilion and they can get, go through all that. Genetic counseling is available for those that need specialized um, concerns about certain genetic issues so they can be counseled about it and then have the opportunity for additional genetic testing, be it amniocentesis or coronic villus sampling. So all those are available right there for the mother just in the diagnostic phase. The fetal imaging provided here is state of the art. We have imaging that people dream of. I mean, it's even, it's interesting. When, when I look at what we have now compared to what we had before, it's Star Wars. I mean, we're able to see exquisite detail that we never used to be able to see before. If an app
abnormality is found, there's no better place to be. At Texas Children's, very few things are so rare to us anymore because we've seen so much of it and so, you know, so many different times. And that's what really strengthens the team here because there's expertise from different areas that have been brought to bear. We've had surgeons and, and physicians coming from all parts of the world actually coming to be part of our team that now it really again increases our repertoire and our, and our expertise in that regard. So we're able to provide services and care that other people have only heard of or have only seen once or twice, but we've actually seen several times and have seen over and over again that we're not comfortable with. Certain conditions require fetal intervention, and others simply require monitoring and possible treatment after birth. There are some areas that we've found that really intervening before birth can improve the outcomes of those fetuses. Uh, certain areas that have been proven for that, for example, are babies with spina bifida. So we're able to work with the obstetricians and the surgeons and neurosurgeons to provide care for that fetus even before birth to hopefully improve the outcome of that fetus after birth. But it's not just serious interventions being seen here. The Fetal Center offers a program for multiples to help mothers who are expecting more than one baby. Women pregnant with multiple uh, gestations have unique issues and concerns that are much different from those that are pregnant with singletons. So we've developed here really a very robust program that can evaluate those different components, starting from just even the nutritional aspects of it and, and knowing what is expected. How much weight do you gain if you're pregnant with twins or triplets as opposed to a singleton? So things like that. What are the things you need to watch out for in your diet? What are specific things that may be at risk, both for the mother and, and for the fetus that, that they need to pay attention to? For the smallest of babies being seen at this center, the backing of Texas Children's Hospital will provide them a lifetime of top-notch care. Like I tell most of the moms, I'll, I'll, only, I'll get to know you not just now, but even until your baby goes all the way to college, because we follow them from conception essentially all the way to adolescence. So it's that continuity of care that's actually the seven hour surgery we're going to talk about. But in the end, two conjoined twin girls are now able to live their lives separately. Yes, we first brought you an update on Anna and Hope Richards in our newscast at four o'clock. Tonight at five, we are hearing for the first time from the doctor who performed that delicate surgery. Channel 2's Ryan Korsgaard is live tonight with more on this. Ryan? And we just got that update from the doctor, and it is very good news. We're told one of the little girls is still on a breathing machine. The other one is watching her sister very closely. Let me show you some pictures of these little girls. Number one, Anna Grace and Hope Elizabeth Richards. They were born a little bit more than a year ago, but they were separated last month at Texas Children's Hospital. Now, it took a team of 75 specialists. You can imagine that includes surgeons, cardiologists, even nurses from eight different specialties. While the surgery itself took about seven hours, we're told the the process took more than 12 hours. The team prepared for everything for a year. That physical preparation started in November. Now, they were joined, we're told, at the chest, the abdomen, the torso. They shared the chest wall, the lining of the heart, the diaphragm, and the liver. A pediatric surgeon here at Texas Children's says the girls are doing great. The girls are doing great. You know, Anna is, um, she's just really boisterous and playful and she's a little further along than her sister, but she's grabbing at things and she gets a little jealous now when you leave her to go, you know, see her sister and she kind of lets you know about it. Um, Hope isn't quite there yet. She's still on the breathing machine, but she's making progress and hopefully we're working on, on getting her.